Howdy. Welcome to our latest AlphaGo AlphaGo game commentary. I'm Chris Garlock. With me, Michael Redmond, Nine Dime Professional. Good morning, Michael. Hi, Chris. So we are up to game nine. We're just plugging along here. We're yeah. Just making... <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, good. And so um, what is the what's the overview on game nine? OK, well, uh, uh, they get into this big fight on the left side and it's going to be a co and a trade. Um, and it's sort of hard to say, but it's a really interesting fight they start out with. And then there's another co that actually didn't happen. And so there's there's these two codes that I'll be talking about. The code that didn't happen. That sounds like yeah, a uh, that sounds like a Sherlock Holmes mystery. The code yeah, that didn't right. happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of you guys, about it, yeah. some of you guys will know what I'm talking about. Yeah. All right, <laughs> all right. Let's uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Okay. Um, well, this is actually a, a bit unusual, um, but the same opening has happened with the Blackstones in slightly different points like the, right. the left side position is actually fairly common in this series um and then gonna, i can talk about this variation that Fang Li was showing in a video um this is what black plans to do next and um i might have said this before but this is actually something that gosegan was showing us at the gosegan study group mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's it's almost exactly the same variation we talked about um, this in game six, I think, right? I think it was game six, yes. Yeah. Uh, same position, uh, mm -hmm. if we're looking at the left side alone. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's um, it sort of shows that Gosegan and AlphaGo agree as to what Black should do here. Um, so it's a question of if you believe in AlphaGo, then uh, you're saying Gosegan was a great player because he <laughs> has the same idea. Or if you believe in Gosegan, then you then you um, then it means AlphaGo is good, right? I I subscribe so, to both one of those actually. Other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so again, we see that Black does not play the Joseki move, and AlphaGo doesn't do that. It just doesn't um, like to play that extension. And White plays a pincer here. You can see I've marked up the Go board a little bit. Sure. Um, this is the only game where White plays this pincer on the left side in this left side position. Mm. Um, white plays a pincer at B in a couple of games. I uh, I forget the exact count. Or white mm. plays the uh, plays at A. Um, but it, this is this wide pincer is a bit unusual. But of course, it, if we include the position of the right side stones, the corner stones that Black has on the right side, it is a unique p position among the 50, 55 games. So maybe it has something to do with that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really understand the opening enough to say that that would make a difference, but some players have a feeling in some positions that it makes a difference. And it's, it's something we don't, in the opening, we don't really know at this point. It's, we, we don't have anything, we have feelings maybe, or sometimes mm -hmm. our experience tells us something. So black plays the double Kakari, and white plays this, um, and black plays the attachment. Like this is AlphaGo's favorite move, you might say, in this mm -hmm. position. Um, and I've added a B and an A. Um, AlphaGo never plays the invasion in the 3-3 point at B um, with black. Um, and human players don't play it very much either now. Um, but um, it's a move that AlphaGo has never played that I've seen. Occasionally black plays at A. And so like there's one or two games where it's played the shape where it plays at A. But uh, this attachment here is um, by far the most popular move for AlphaGo. And that's as much as I can say. I don't, it, it's, it's really hard to evaluate which is the best move. Hmm. But it's the move that I like to play recently too. And I, um, I just can't really say exactly why. Hmm. And then black plays here. Now this one space extension, it looks really natural in the context that black, white has that marked uh, pincer already, so it seems a natural move. But actually, it's the move that AlphaGo will play quite often, even without a white stone on the on the side. Without that white, white pincer stone, maybe Black would be playing here anyway. Hmm. AlphaGo seems to like this one space extension that does put more uh, pressure on the white corner. Uh, so that's the value of this move. And then White plays here. Like this is a point where if White plays on the top, then Black's going to be able to slide into the 
into the left side. And this is just a left side territory for black. Mm. So this is what black is threatening to do. And this would make it easy for black. So white, white uh, cuts black off, black jumps out. And already this is looking like a fairly difficult fight. Like it's, it's getting very exciting already. Yeah. And white jumps here. Um, and this is sort of uh, threatening the upper side too, like black plays here. Without that black move, um, maybe white is thinking of doing something like this next. This this would be a nice pincer that white could play. And, and then something like this. Um, to to um, take away the base of black's upper side group. So mm -hmm. this is uh, the move, the follow-up move that white is threatening to do. So um, black uh, plays here. Uh, this strengthens the upper side. We can see black is uh, in a position, if we're looking at the upper side, this is a position where you might expect black to be playing some kind of an extension on the third line mm -hmm. to make some territory. But instead, black plays uh, this um, this move, which is stronger in the fight towards the center. So the black is um, putting a lot of um, value into the fight in the center. And also, of course, is threatening to cut at the mark point. So right. uh, this is a point where my plan would usually be to try to strengthen that white corner group. Seems natural, right? So uh, I might be, yes, a, yeah, yes, yes. I would peep here. It seems a strange move, but I would peep here and maybe jump once here. This is a, a hmm. bit of a bit of greed, but I want, it, it adds profit for me on the left side. And then I would play here. So the peep here, and pulling back here is the combination that I would want to play with white. Um, and it, it's I, I want to play it because it gives white life in the upper left corner. This is a live group now. And so that's why I would want to play this way. It's mm -hmm. pretty much mm -hmm. alive. Um, but white doesn't do that. Um, white plays here. And you can see I've marked the point. That's where black would jump usually. Sure. AlphaGo really likes to jump there like um, like this. Um, not maybe not right now, but you know this is a move that AlphaGo likes to play. So white plays here to stop black from doing that, and then black peeps here. So we can see this peep uh, is working well with uh, the Narabi here. It's, and these two moves are kind of a set. Um, black played that move on the fourth line to make it easy to peep here. And again with white, I would want to protect the upper left corner, right? Mm -hmm. Seems natural. So white should play here maybe, and black will answer, and then white can jump again. And um, white's not really connected there, but um, at the very least, it's going to be difficult for black to kill the whole group. Mm -hmm. um, and black is not alive yet either, so um, it, it looks like white can still handle this. And uh, the left side is gradually turning into white's territory. Mm -hmm. or, well, not really, but it's white's at least surrounding black, so it's going to be a tight spot for black there. So this is how I would play with white. Um, but AlphaGo just ignores it. Like this is a, um, white's just leaving the upper left corner and saying that um, if black plays something from the outside, white can just play at the mark point. And that's pretty much a live group. Like black might be, be made, able to make a co out of it. But um, white's gradually sort of treating that upper left corner as a light group and saying it's not as big as the left side. Wow, wow. And yeah, so this is sort of surprising. And then there's this move. Now this move really, it, uh, I really like this move. It's a very strange looking move that works in this position. And the idea is that black, um, it's really hard, black couldn't really play at the mark point yet. That would be a bit premature. Um, so it's the question of how to attack this white group mm -hmm. is a difficult question for black. And so black, starts from the other side, um, sort of asking white to decide what to do here. Like if white plays something like this, this would give white a good shape um, towards the center. But then of course, black would be able to make some extra eye space. Mm -hmm. And then it would black would be free to play on the second line because this would be a living shape for black. Um, so black wouldn't have to worry about getting out in the center and would be able to just take away white's eye shape. Mm -hmm. um, living at the same time. And that that would be a lot of trouble for the white group. And we can see that white's probably going to get the lower left area, but it's going to be on a relatively small scale. 
Mm-hmm. So this mm-hmm. is Black's, one of Black's plans. So White doesn't allow that. Um, so sort of Black is, with this move, Black is sort of uh, teasing White a little bit and asking White to, to play this aggressive move with which Black is going to use this move to settle the shape in the upper left area. And starting a co here, now a co this early in the game, um, there's a saying that the early co doesn't have a co threat for it. Mm-hmm. And it's true of this, Black doesn't have a very good, any good co threats for this co. But the point is that that mark stone there, the stone on the third line, is not completely wasted. Like um, for a stone that has started a co, um, it's well away from the co that's happening. Like it's not as if um, it's going to disappear from the board when white wins the co. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it's actually, um, there's some use in having a black stone there because it's giving potential to the left side group to live. Um, so it's a very clever way for black to start the co, having that stone at a safe distance, you might say. Mm-hmm. And so we end up with this trade. Um, and that marked stone is still, like if black plays another move on the left side, it's going to live. Right. Um, if white plays another move on the left side, it sort of depends on various factors. That was going to be my next question. It's, it's not It's not uh, unquestionably dead, right? It's a... Well, in in the game sequence, we're going to see it die. Okay. But the game in the game sequence, white is sacrificing the corner. So we'll look at that one first. Like in this sequence, it turns out uh, okay. it's, was... it's probably a bit wide open for people to understand, but it turns out this is going to be dead. Good, good. Yeah, that was that was just uh, my sort of my instinctive move was that seems mm-hmm. like the shape move right there. This is the shape move. Yes. Yeah. Um, the question is, uh, what if White tries to live in the corner? Ooh. And we have this kind of thing. Uh, White needs another move to live in the corner, and then and black. black breaks out into the center. Right. right. Um, and all sorts of variations could start from this. I could fill fill the. I didn't <laughs> do it. Though. Um, but you, actually, the White group on the left side is not very strong, and so this would be troublesome for White. I just want to say something about your variations, which everybody knows who's been looking at the SGS. But Michael's variations have variations, and sometimes Michael's variations within variations also have variations. I so, get carried away. Well, actually, I, I, I didn't say that. So I didn't say that. I'm just, I'm just, so I'm just, I need I'm just, to do that. Yeah. I'm just telling people, you know, be on the lookout because yeah, there yeah. are, there's, there's one I was working on yesterday. I think it's in, oh, it's in game six where you have a 76 move sub variation <laughs> or 78. I think it's a 78 move sub variation. And I thought, be late in the game. I yeah. thought I made a mistake. I thought I was in the main in the main line, and then I realized, no, this is. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah. back back to this game. Okay, actually, there's a little uh, hidden Smiggle problem here, Ooh, um, hey. because I added a move to the corner. Um, there is the question of what what happens if White plays away. Oh, so that is a question. Um, and oh, actually, so. even just looking at the left side group here. When white doesn't have that captured stone, as in in this shape, mm. uh, there's a difference there. So in this shape, I'm pretty sure that eventually the the black group is going to die. Okay. I'm not so sure about this one. Hmm. And uh, this is just so full of various bad odds. Uh, like for instance, when black does something like this, there's bad yeah. odds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some extra forcing moves there. Um, I wouldn't call this a, even a symbol problem. It's, it, it's just to, it depends on how black might potentially break out into the center and some of the variations and stuff wow. like that. Um, I'm, I'm not going to do that variation, It'd just be kind of confusing <laughs> myself. But it's um, interesting, the interesting thing is what, what is going to happen to the upper left corner? Because that's something I think I can probably, um, I can probably uh, tell you what's going to happen without making a mistake in the upper left corner. We have confidence. How would how would you go ahead and kill it, Chris, if you were white, if you were black, that is? If I was black. Well, the Hane Connect is not going to do it. That's just alive right away. That's alive, yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh, the, 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 the play, the play, yeah, that, that's, that's, just alive. Yeah. that's just alive right away. Yeah, so so then you'd have to try like the B, was it B18 as a placement, but that. Oh, wow, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's interesting, yeah. Then what? 
Uh, then you have to do something like pull back, threatening to connect underneath. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, that would be good. But that actually, White's going to play here. And then, uh, okay, so then the closing in from outside, and then, and then, uh, 17. Yeah, yeah, that looks that like looks if, if this, if something like this, and, oh, uh, sorry, I don't want to do that move. And then something like this happens. This is actually a dead shape. Yeah. But at some point, White's going to be playing at this point. Mm hmm. And this is going to be a co. Like uh, yes, White co, could have played co. it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, White could have played it with this move even, but this this is one of the key points in the corner, which is going to um, because if Black plays straight down, this is going to be too too much space mm -hmm. to kill. So it, it, this is um, playing that placement on the on, on a two two point is actually a pretty good move, mm -hmm. and in some cases it's going to work. But, but not in this case, right? Not in this case, right. <laughs> um, these two extra liberties that White has, why don't we mark the liberties just to make sure everyone knows what I'm talking about. Uh, these two liberties here, they actually make a difference. Oh, um, right. Because, for instance, um, if all of the liberties were filled, I think this even would be a way to kill White. Really? Um, oh, maybe I'm just... Um, I shouldn't have said that. Just forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've confused yeah. Michael. Yeah, I don't. I don't uh, know. I mean, you know, the other one is just a straight. Uh, it, I don't know. It looks. It looks hard to kill. When you say straight, I bet you were thinking of. I was here. thinking about that. Yeah. And then here, this mm -hmm. actually is fairly similar to a position um, where the hunter kills. You're right. Um, it's a position where you play three moves um, to surround the corner. And, uh, in this case, the white group has played the sun sound point. Yeah, um, it's a famous life and death problem where yeah, black plays the hunt in. Yeah, that's such a great. And, yeah, and more or less it works in this case. Like if white plays something like this, uh, then black can play here. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm and if white continues to try to make an eye in the corner, then this becomes the key point, and this reverts to the the normal shape. Um, and if show, 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 here, show people, show, no, okay, no, go back, go back it, and show I'll folks that because that's pretty cool, actually. This and is, when this white is... plays here, then black can throw in here, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Um, this makes it a full side. Yeah. Um, and again, um, even if this stone, for instance, if white plays it here, again, this becomes the key point. Yeah. Um, because white cannot play here because it will be in a target. Yeah. So this is something that actually you can find a position just like this in uh, the Joseki. Mm -hmm. And single books, life and death books. It's a classic. This, this a classic. is the key point for white too, um, actually. And this is where it differs from that shape, actually. Mm -hmm. um, because if black plays here, white can play a co like this. This would make right. a co. Right. Uh, but act in actual play, black would be able to play here. And let's see, if white plays here, black plays here, white plays here, this is a seki. Seki. So that's good for white, only yeah, too black good. gets yeah, to but... play here first. And this becomes a dead shape because okay. white. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Because essentially, right. white's going to be playing here at some point. Right, right. so it's just a, a three stone nakade. And so, when going back to this point, in order to get a seki, white this becomes a key point also. But uh, black gets to play here. Mm -hmm. And if white takes, then black's going to play here. Oh, that's, that's that's a knockout day. Yeah. That's cool. And but so if white plays the, the corner, then black disconnects. Now this is another three stone knockout day. Yeah. Um. So just to go, I haven't even gotten to the correct variation yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because actually, white can make a bit of a code by playing here and then here. So this would be a call. Uh huh. Uh, but it would be. This would be a step co. It's a one step co. But also, there's the problem that Black is getting this forcing move. So that's going to make it easy for Black to live on the left side. So there's all these negative things. So um, even though White can get this desperate co in the corner, it's a, it's a co that's advantageous for Black. Mm. Uh, and Black's going to, White's going to have a lot of trouble when Black does this stuff on the left side too. So it's it's as good as dead. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the, um, 
the final decision is that if if, if black does get to um, connect so white, here, white needs to move. White has to white has to play here after all. So that's and that's my verdict. Yeah. Well, and this is important for for ordinary humans to know because you know if you can leave it, mm -hmm. I mean, that would be a big difference if white could play here. Yes. Right. Yeah, because I mean, then you get to you get to I mean, probably kill and live at the same time. So that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah. So AlphaGo just takes the one stone instead. Um, and this, I agree with this move. I think this is correct. Huh. And it gives White the extra security there on the left side to kill the left side black group. Do you think maybe uh, AlphaGo just didn't want to read out the life and death in the corner? Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm well, you know, AlphaGo doesn't, it doesn't say, it doesn't really think about life and death the way humans do. It's, it's really strange because what do you mean? I don't, I don't think, well, AIs in general, mm -hmm. um, it's not a big deal whether a certain group lives or dies. It doesn't make any difference. <laughs> There's no pain at all. Um, and it's just the fact, it's looking at the overall position. Mm. And um, this position is, is looking better for white than the other position just I'm because overall. But but can I just say that without the pain and joy of life and death, where's where's the fun? <laughs> well, you have to ask AlphaGo. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so this left side group, there's no way Black can live there. Mm. And we're going to be we're, that's going to be playing out later in the game. Well, I'll, I'll um, be talking about it a little bit more. So we can leave it. Just believe me for the time being. I believe you. And so that white territory is really big. It's um, something like twenty points more, actually more than 20 points more than Black's upper left corner. So there's a big difference in territory. Mm -hmm. But as we look at the whole board, that, that's the only territory that White has. So I think it's, a, it's an even result. Mm -hmm. um, the variations that I go into later seem to be an even, even fight. So I'm going to call this an even result. Okay. Um, White plays the Kakari here. Um, and since white has that strong, relatively strong shape on the left um, with that white territory, I think this fight in the lower right is going to be very important. And so white playing a way here, this is something that AlphaGo sort of likes to play this point at any random time in the game. It's just a, the shoulder hit here is a move that we could say AlphaGo just likes it. But I think it's poorly timed in this game. This is a move that I would question. Hmm. Um, because the lower right fight is very important, um, I would say white should play here. Um, and I was thinking of various moves with this. This is a kind of a, a bit of an old-fashioned joseki, um, but it seems to work fairly well in this position. This is, I'll just show you the most modern variation. This is um, black, um, this is the variation that black players like to play nowadays. It's a bit different from the one you'll find in a book. Um, but in any case, White plays the uh, extension here, the pincer. And we can see that this is a fight where there's a lot of space. Um, there's a lot of space on the lower side. Like if we imagine that this is going to turn into a white territory, it's going to be pretty big because there's plenty of space to spread out into the center. That means that Black is going to be uh, running away. And so the fight will sort of extend towards the upper side of the board. And white won't have to worry about the upper side moyo that black has because the stones will be naturally flowing in that direction and it's going to disappear to a certain degree. It's going to be small. And so this is the, um, the way I would suggest white should play. And I think it's an even fight. In the game, white plays this shoulder hit. It gave black a chance to play mm. an extra move on the lower side. And those two stones on the upper side, uh, let's mark them. Let's just mark those two stones. This stone and this stone. It's like black is taking the territory while white is floating on top. So that exchange mm -hmm. there was a gain for black. Um, and so I'm sort of comparing it with black playing um, instead of playing in the upper side, for instance, this move. Um, black could have played a Shimari also. But then, of course, white would have been played, playing the Kakari here. So that mm -hmm. would be a completely different game. Um, the fact that black got that exchange in. Uh, like this. This exchange here is a good exchange for black because white's too close to black's strength on the left side. Um, when white tries to do something on the upper side, that exchange on the upper side is good for black. And so I think black has already gained a little bit here. 
And this is where the game gets really funny. Like this is where people would just say, I don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. But as black is going to the left here and then back to the right. Just, just just show you the sequence here. We can see black dancing back and forth here. Um, so is this just AlphaGo playing forcing moves like it sometimes does? Mm -hmm. uh, and my answer to that is I don't think so. Hmm. Um, because uh, when I look at the lower right position, I'm seeing a co, co in the cards. It's, it, it, there's a co coming up. Hmm. And white, um, I've marked a sp this spot on, in the upper left there. That's a huge quote threat that white has. So white has oh. one very uh, one valid quote threat. That's going to be big enough for any co. And so white can start a co that would usually be considered unreasonable because white has this one big co threat. So the co threat I'm going to be talking about, the co I'm going to be talking about is this one because. Um, First of all, let's see. Let's take another look at the time. The moment White pushes out here, um, White's not completely committed. But like, um, if White did not want to play a co, White would also have moves like this to choose from, mm. which would just be trying to live in the corner. So this would be a variation White could choose that would not be a co variation, not necessarily. Um, once White's played this move. Um, White is not completely committed, but white is sort of pointing in the direction to start the co. Mm -hmm. So this is heading towards the co. So this is a good time for black to play this move because this exchange here on the left um, is one step towards making a big co threat there. It's not quite there, but black is taking the step to making a big co threat, to creating a big co threat on the left. Um, but locally, it's a bad exchange for black. Locally, black is losing points. Mm, mm. So if there's a balance of black's losing points on the left side, but white is starting to be committed to a koan in the lower right. So black doesn't want to play this point losing move too early, but once white is played here, maybe black feels free to lose a few points on the left because white has already started to create the co position. Mm -hmm. And so the same thing happens once more. When white cuts here, now white's really committed. Like once white is cut here, um, it's going to be really sort of embarrassing for white to be backing down, um, and there's going to be a real loss um, attached to that. So there's, I'll show you the co variation. Uh, the co variation goes like this, and this is a point where in most games, white would be just sort of crawling on the third line or something. Mm -hmm. But that would be locally that would be uh, good enough for black. So what uh, what black is should be afraid of is white cutting here. And this is obviously unreasonable, usually, because it would be a, a perfect example of the case where an early co has no co threat for it. Sure. This is a huge co, but actually the co threat is huger, because uh, this is something like if white gets to play the follow up move, pushing through, taking those black stones, uh, and getting rid of that big black territory in the corner. That's something like 50 points in territory alone. Right. It's almost points and then there's the added value that the the black group on the upper side is going to become weaker than it was before and so there's a huge value there black has to answer it and black runs out of co threats wow right away and this, in this position on the left black's co threat is not quite big enough so black would be forced to connect and locally this is going to be a win for white mm. so this is what white is planning to do and we can see that white is getting closer and closer to it like with this, um, with this move, white is taking one step in that direction. And then with this move, white is more or less committed to do that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, as far as the local moves are concerned. And so uh, this is when black, um, instead of playing this move, which would lead to that code that black could not win, black plays another cut. And this is another point losing move. This is losing some more points on the left. But it's okay because white is already committed to the call. So white plays here and then black pulls back. So if white starts the call, um, then black is going to have to answer that call threat, but now black has this call threat. And it's going to be this kind of a trade. Hmm. And although there's a hole there, that black group is actually connected. Like if white does something like this, uh, black can just play here and play the attachment. So that's good enough. That's nice. Good enough for black. Um, and so this is this is already actually it's a bit better for black. It's a, it's a huge loss on the lower side, but we can see that whole white territory there has disappeared. Right. So this is um, a slight advantage for black. 
So black had to get this far on the left side to have this advantage. Like um, anything less than this ponuki uh, would not be a good enough co threat for black. This ponuki is barely enough to balance white's gain in the lower right. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like, uh, slightly good for black actually. And so there was a very delicate uh, give and take here as black is playing these moves on the left that are locally losing a lot of points. Um, it's really hard to give a, an exact value there, um, but black is losing something on the left side, uh, but timing it perfectly uh, so that white is making bad moves in the lower right at the same time. So they're, they're going back and forth. Just I'll just show you that, uh, that set of moves once more, because it's really, really funny to see the players jumping back and forth like that. When like white, white starts here, and then black plays on the left, and it's as if they're sort of playing some different game. Uh, but it's just uh, actually a, a, a good meaning to that. And uh, so white cannot play the ko, and white doesn't have any other good choices at this point in the lower right. It's, it, white's already so committed to the ko position, white doesn't have any other good local move. So white back, uh, instead of playing the ko, White just takes the ponuki. So wow. White's gained a lot on the left, and Black has gained a lot in the lower right. And I would say it, it's at this point that Black took the lead, mm -hmm. uh, because um, although both of these positions um, are very nice positions for both sides, like Black played two bad moves with A and B, and White played two bad moves with C and D. Uh, but White's profit is in a place where White already had territory. So white already had a position there on the left. It was already fairly well established. Whereas black is getting all this thickness and territory in a, in a place where, which was completely undecided. It was an empty space. It was um, no one's land yet. Well, just and so this turned into a big profit for black. Yeah, I mean, just a little while ago, you're talking about the big, I mean, coming out of the opening that, you know, when you were evaluating it and white only had the one territory and this is farther on and white still only has one the territory. It only has one territory. It's, it's beautiful thickness. It is. But it's yeah. sort of over-concentrated, you might say. <laughs> Too much thickness in one place. Yeah. Um, so now I think the game is good for black. And I think the way black handles the rest of the game sort of um, agrees with what I'm saying. Because now black is going to start to look like a master person when it was mm. playing against all those humans and mm -hmm. usually was, had a fairly solid lead mm -hmm. uh, fairly well into the game. Like where it moved 57. Usually in the master series at this point, master was... Uh, okay. Game was over. Game was over as far as master was concerned. And it was, um, it was being very um, easy on the opponent in the fights. Like it was playing safe variations, just avoiding... Mm complicated variations. And I think partly that was because of the time control, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. It's a longer time control for, for AlphaGo in these games, so it has more time to think about variations. Um, but it's also the fact that Black had enough um, control of the game to be able to play relatively easy variations and still win the game. And so at this point, we can already see that Black White is sort of is going to be very busy here because white has to uh, reduce the right side as well as the upper side. So white covers once here to reduce the upper side and then jumps in here. So really jumping around the board. Um, like just playing normally like this would uh, make the right side a, a lot less room for white to jump into. Mm -hmm. uh, so something like this might happen. And this would lead to a double attack. Um, sure. It would actually be more dangerous for white. So it's safer for white to play here now, in which case the right side white stone, for the time being, white has a two space extension in one or the other direction. So mm -hmm. for the time being, it's okay. Um, and so all white has to worry about is the upper side group. So I agree with this move, mm -hmm. uh, it's a very sharp move. And then black plays from the side. We can see already black is um, avoiding the danger of just surrounding white and having white live on the side, taking away all the territory. Black's sort of trying to take some territory while attacking white. White plays an attachment on the top. And now black plays the key point. This is a, a vital point. They say you play the honey on the top of two stones. So this is where black would have usually played with this movement instead of just playing a pincer. This is the shape move. Um, and white plays a honey underneath. So white's setting up to play a honey at B. 
like if black plays on the right at A, white can play at B. And the reason why it didn't do that immediately was because this would uh, allow black to connect underneath. And we can see that marked stone there is at a key point. So white plays once here, and black extends in the center. Um, so this playing the honey here is a, a nice move. It's a nice shape. And then white plays the hanging connection, the kakitsugi. So now A and B are mi. White can play A to capture the one black stone, or B to get into the corner. So this was well done. This was a nice good sequence for white. And so we have this thing happening in the corner. And white's going to live very easily. So locally, it was very good for white. And so this is already something that, um, as I was saying, it reminds me of the master version, where black is basically just allowing white to do his thing, because uh, black is more interested in controlling the game, mm -hmm. controlling the flow in an orderly manner that will end up in an end game position. So black is sort of trying to take this to an end game position, where it will um, will have um, a, a more a firmer knowledge that it's going to win. Like at this point of the game, you don't really know what's going to happen on the right side or the lower side. Um, so AlphaGo as black here is trying to control the game, willing to give up a little territory on the upper side, but it's trying to control the flow of the game um, up to a point where it will be able to calculate a uh, victory, I think. This is useful for amateurs because often what I see is, uh, you know, one side will be, you know, usually very far ahead, right? I mean, with a clear, clear lead. Um, and then, you know, the opponent who is behind will make something, you know, some unreasonable play. And the person who is very far away tries to kill, you know, mm -hmm. the, the stone. Technically, it's probably possible, but it's not necessary. Right. You know? Well... With the AlphaGo games, of course, it's on a different level, I would say. Sure, um, of course. And that White is not playing moves that will immediately fall apart, mm. but um, is trying to make complications, mm. definitely. And so Black is avoiding that by maybe giving up a little bit locally. But um, And this is true of um, Cuban players, too, the fact that at this point of the game, it's just too much open space to calculate exactly what's going to happen. Um, and so really strong players among humans also are very good at um, starting with a position like this and controlling the game for a little bit, using Black's thickness and uh, uh, the um, potential to attack to force White around a little bit, um, but not trying to get too much out of it, just um, using the control to take the game to a point where um, it's possible to calculate a victory. Sure. And humans do that also, and I think also with AIs in general, and probably AlphaGo, um, I think the winning percentage goes up dramatically when the game ends the final stage, when it's a position where there's not going to be so much fighting, mm -hmm. and it's possible for AlphaGo to calculate um, closer to the ending position. Um, I don't really know in, about Al AlphaGo in particular. I have seen it happen uh, something similar to that happened with other AIs. Mm -hmm. So I would say that might be it. And so uh, this is a point actually where um, White just connected here. Mm -hmm. Now this is ending in Gote. There's a cut there, that, but if White just connects there, Black's not going to protect. So something that sometimes is done is to play a cut here to make that more heavy before connecting on the second line. So this would be forcing black to play another stone in that right. immediate area. And the reason white wants to do this sort of is because this extension here on the side is really big. Sure. Um, so this would be the way white would usually play. And part of the reason that AlphaGo didn't do that is because white's gonna lose anyway. And this would, um, usually when your opponent has potential to attack, and I was talking about this in my commentary about my game against Kyo, actually. When your opponent has thickness and is going to attack you, you try to keep the game relatively simple. You don't want to really get into a messy fight when your right. opponent has a lot of thickness. Um, but in this position where Black is going to win anyway, um, simplifying the game like this is not what White wants to do. This would just take the game to an end 
right. um, and actually black squinting. So in general, in, in a wide view, that's um, why white doesn't do that. Also in particular, the fact that um, playing this cut here, this is actually taking a local loss to simplify the game. Um, because for instance, when white doesn't cut, if black were to play here, if we compare this position to this position, there's, this is much better for white. It gives white a lot more room to, there's still room for white to extend on the side. Mm -hmm. So this is being able to clasp the one stone like this, to capture the one stone while black defends is actually a significant gain in, in value for black. So this is a kind of a little gambit that white does to be able to take the big point on the side. And when white is losing anyway, um, the gambit is a bit too costly. So mm -hmm. um, white chose not to play that move and just to connect and, and just to try to get some more territory instead of trying to simplify the game. Although white gets the biggest point here, it, it doesn't seem to be good enough for white if we look at the overall position. And you agree with that anyway? I agree with that. And I think it's an example of the fact that um, locally, the, the default move for me would be to play this way. Um, but the fact that um, AlphaGo, I think, is just evaluating the whole game position uh, makes that move just uh, not something it can choose. So black gets to play the pincer here. Um, and white, we can see white taking some territory. There's also some added value to this because black shape on the outside um, has dumb as Murray, has a uh, lack mm -hmm. of liberties, which is going right. to show up, going to show up fairly soon. Uh, white connects, black plays the Kaketsugi. And now, now we have this move. And nice. um, so it's really sharp play by white. This is hitting the key point. It's a vital point in black shape. Um, that I've marked just three stones. It's usually, the proverb says you hit the center of three stones. Mm -hmm. um, so although it's a four stone black group, I chose just to mark the three stones. Um, this is the key point. Like um, if you tell a beginner to play in the middle of three stones, the beginner might play um, play closer to the three stones, but actually mm -hmm. play a one space jump away from the three stones here, threatening the cut on the left. So black has to answer that. Black tech goes after one stone, then again this move. It's another nice move. So white is threatening the cut. Of course, if black cuts here, white's going to capture in the ladder. So this is out of the question. So black is putting pressure on black's wall. And the beauty of this is I think it was planned from the cut, the marked cut on the third line. White was setting this up. And the fact that white was uh, setting up this Damizumari with the cut on the third line uh, sort of indicates that maybe White was uh, not only setting up with this move, maybe White was setting it up with this move. Mm -hmm. Because White knows that Black's not going to answer locally. So all of these moves are sort of intertwined um, and cul culminating in this Tesuji that White uses. So this is a very nice sequence where White is, you could say White is sort of planning for it. Mm -hmm. Although again, um, a computer technician would probably tell me that that's not what AlphaGo does, but um, I, I think there's a connection here, a continuity in the way White is playing. And so, um, again, Black, this is another move. These moves in the center um, are one of AlphaGo's strong points, I would say. So it's a, um, this is an area where playing in a move like this in the center is a move that quite often a human player is not very sure of. Um, how it's going to work or how it's supposed to be used. But AlphaGo is in general very good at using moves like this in the center. Mm. And Black's going to use this to put pressure on White's group. Like people would be tend, would tend to sort of want to take the one stone, but that would give White a lot more room in the center. And actually it would give White some potential to start surrounding territory in the center later because White has this big thickness on the left. And so um, this is a part of the game where um, you could sort of just over overlook this move, but actually I find moves like this in the center that AlphaGo plays are moves that um, I can learn a lot from. Because mm. it's just because the center is so hard for humans to to um, figure out. It's a it's a point where we don't really know where to play in the center sometimes. 
But once so, you see that move, it just it is beautiful. It, it really makes just sense. really makes yeah. sense. And white plays here. White's starting to make eyes on the side, so that that's the reason for this move. Like white plays here and then takes the one stone. White could have taken the one stone immediately with this move, but then black would be playing on the on the side here, and white wouldn't get any eyes. So that's why white starts with the peep. So white's starting to make some eyes there. Black still uh, closes white in in the center. And then black starts doing stuff on the left side. And so you, you might say, oh, um, again, AlphaGo likes to play forcing moves. So maybe this is what AlphaGo is doing. And sometimes I suggest that AlphaGo is trying to, I think AlphaGo is playing something like two or three minutes for each move, maybe two minutes. Ah, OK. And so I, I, sometimes I say maybe AlphaGo is trying to gain some thinking time I'm not sure that the AlphaGo, the deep mind people will agree with me because um, mm -hmm. I'm just I'm, that's, I'm just making a, a guess. Um, but actually, I found a reason for Black to be playing this move to fix the shape here, because later on in the game, Black's going to make use of these two stones. The A and B stones are starting a kind of a little smego problem in the left side, in which White is going to kill Black, but Black is going to use a move at C to get some extra value out of that. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. And it's going to happen in the game. So I'll be able to show you in the actual game sequence. Cool. Um, Black's going to die on the left side, but it's going to use a move at C to get some extra value out of that depth. So um, so there's actually some meaning uh, with A and B. There, those are moves that, according to Black's game plan here, and the way the game turned out, Black's going to want to be playing these moves at some, at some point. Anyway. Well, and that's a that's a good thing again for folks to know because sometimes you play a move like that even though you know that it's going to die. But if you can, I mean, and, you know, amateurs can see that that if you can get some extra moves on the outside, right. and at our level, of course, uh, there's always a chance. You know, it could live, right? Some, yeah, something could happen. So. It's a pretty tough smiggle. We could go into that smiggle later. Like if we had fun in the upper left corner. There's the left side is actually uh, a more unusual position. So there's oh, cool. different, uh, different variations. Right. So black closes in white. Um, so this sequence in the center, these three stones that black played in the center, are actually a set of moves. So um, it is sort of a, a disconnection that black sort of dodges to the left side here. Although I'm saying these moves, they have a meaning. Um, they sort of interrupt the process in the center. The, the, this move black has played in the center right now. Um, should be seen as a set with these these two moves that Black played earlier. It's a, a sequence there that Black is using to close White in. And uh, Black is actually inviting White to make a life, because White can make a life. White makes a life with this move. So this move is threatening to connect underneath. Um, and of course, if White had simply played here, Black would be able to clamp here and take away White's eye space. So there's a difference in eye space there. White plays here. To expand the eye space. If black plays here, white can connect underneath. And because of the weakness at A, oh. black cannot cut it off. And this is like it's usually um, black would be happy to force white to be connecting on the first line in general. But actually, connecting here with that black stone in the corner added to the uh, profit white has, it's a pretty big move. Um, like it's something, it's about nine points mm. in the corner that white mm -hmm. has gained by playing this move. Mm -hmm. And there's also the fact that black doesn't get the force on the side. So I'll show you what happens in the game. In the game, black plays here. So that's a nine point move. But there's the added value of that mark point that black can use as a forcing move. That's pretty right. big. This move is bigger than the nine points. So just those two, this move and this move, the exchange in itself is a gain for white. But the fact that black has to uh, force here <clears throat> is added value. And now, um, this is the final. This sort of ends the um, the forcing sequence that Black was using to simplify the game, you might say, or take it into the end game stage. So this is a point where I would um, I would assume that an AI or AlphaGo in particular would, um, as Black would have the winning percentage go up at this point because um, there's much fewer variations that um, would be giving a problem to black. And so white plays once here. Um, this is reducing black's potential in the center. And then black, now this is going to start something on the side. Um, 
directly, of course, black is threatening to expand in the center. So a white place here and here. This is natural. And now uh, something is going to start on the side. So black place here, uh, threatening to lip. Uh, it's, this is forced. Like if black play, if white plays here, this looks like a good move too. Black will just play here, and now black's alive on the side. So this is wow. um, threatening to lip. Mm. So white pushes through. Black plays a uh, okay. Now this is the move that's going to make a difference. Like if black just plays here. Uh, this, it doesn't have enough room to live. It's just dead. Wow. So usually this black group is going to be dead. So black plays once here. And uh, white plays a few forcing moves here. Now if white connects here. Um, did you see the answer for the black? Black's next move. I did not. No, I didn't. Oh, well, I, 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 yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't peek. I did not peek. You did not peek. Wow. I did not peek. I know. Well, there's yeah. a nice move that Black can play now to live. I feel like it must be some. I mean, just connecting obviously is is not good enough. They get the false side. It's got to be one of those one, those those first line tricky moves, tricksy moves. I can't quite see the coordinates, but uh, is it was it a eight or something goofy like that? That's it. No um, way. Seriously. So white takes the stone, black plays it. You can see that this marks. Oh, stone. oh, yeah, oh, oh! That's so cool. And Babs, Babs says he knew it too. It was well, Babs right, is yeah. five, but well, Babs is like wise. ten down amateur or something. I forget. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> All right. And so that that's a, a testage there, and we can see the marked stone there is making a difference. That it's, is it's so making, cool. It's, it's making a big difference when this happens, and black has an eye there. Mm. Um, so this is actually, um, it's really interesting if white plays here, and for a moment it looks like it's going to die. But of uh -oh. course you can handle that, right? I... <laughs> uh... The idea here is that if black plays here and white plays here, and black does the same thing, next, this time it's going to be an Atari. Right, right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the descent obviously doesn't work. Uh... Yeah, I need, I need, I need to call a friend on this one. Well, actually, black can. Um, let's see, black can just uh, play here, and it's going to be okay. Oh, so yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. This is one of these things, though. Like in a regular game, with time would just be so annoying. Yeah. Yeah, because you'd so be burning a, yeah, up precious minutes reading there. reading this out. And, yeah, and, you'd have you'd have to have some time left over. And, and black and, and white has to be right, and all black has to do is, you know, get it. Well, yeah. So this is actually for, threatening to live um, because of that variation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just doing, and it's also threatening to cut white off and kill the white stones on the side. So and can can white just tanuki and, and play? So this is a clever move because if white really uh, needs to protect uh, that side group, but right, then right. black would be able to live. So white okay. plays here. So this is killing the black group uh, while making a potential to live on the white si on the side. Oh, group. that is very clever. That's clever. And now white comes here. And now we can see that that stone that black played is actually black's filled his own liberty. So it's not really working well. Um, so black crawls once. So like if black plays here, white's going to squeeze. So this would be really efficient for white. This would be making a life at the same time as killing black. That's very clever. So black plays here. Even though black's going to die, it's important to play here to um, keep white from making the squeeze. So white kills with this stone, and black gets a life. I mean, black gets an eye, but only okay. only one eye. So finally, all of that was so that black could cut here. So black cuts here, and white has to live on the side. And white's being very clever and playing all the all the end game moves first. Right, right, right. And uh, this is possible because black stones are actually in Dame Zamari. Yeah. So black doesn't have uh, any option but to connect here, and then white lives. 
So that settled the whole fight. So blacks played all those stones inside white's territory. Um, and what black gets out of it is this move, because this is threatening a snapback. And so that's a one move difference in the center. That's a big difference that black is, it's a big game for black, because black can push through later. How many moves, how many, was that like 20 some moves just to get that move? It was about move? 30 moves just to get that one. Jeez, yeah. wow. And so that was a pretty amazing sequence. Yes, it is. And now black plays here. That's a, this is a, a nasty move too. <laughs> um, but wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, black wasn't satisfied. It's like me in my game. I was sort of happy about the opening and I slacked up a bit, but you know, um, AlphaGo doesn't give up anything to the end. Wow. Now the meaning of this move is black is, uh, black, white is already alive on the side. <clears throat> so black is asking white a question here. Obviously, there's immediate threat. Like if black gets to, if white plays away, and black gets to cut here, black's going to be able to take away white's eye space. Like black's going to be able to reduce white to one eye with sent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that would be just a, a bust for white. That would, white would, white's group would die. Right, right, right. So um, it's an immediate threat, and against this move, white has to decide now um, whether to make two eyes. Or um, which would give Black a, a bit of profit, or to um, refuse to give Black the profit, but then White would not have a completely alive group. White tough has to make choice. choice now. Tough choice. Like wow. if Black had played here, Black would have potential to kill White, but that would be Mei with White running out into the center. Sure. But the fact that Black plays here means that Black has this sequence here that can take to reduce it to one eye with Sente, and then kill it. So there's immediate threat here, mm -hmm. and White has to decide now whether to um, White played turn. Uh, I might as well show it one move at a time. White uh, played out here. White still has to decide um, how to capture that Mark Blackstone. Mm -hmm. So if White plays here, it's going to be alive, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and all Black gets is this one honey. Like it's a it's a um, one or two points difference. Right. And then Black's going to play here. Um, but black has a win winning position. So white's not going to give up that one or two points. It's just a tiny, um, a tiny loss. It's probably the correct move. Yeah, but, but he white's can't afford, not he can't afford it. it. Um, well, the game is not going to be so great either. But you know, white's just not being stubborn. You might say. Yeah, it's AlphaGo being stubborn. There you, there you go, ascribing yeah. human emotions to AlphaGo. <laughs> <Yeah. I guess. laughs> yep. And so. Later, black can play at the mark point and kill white. So black plays here. And this isn't the best move. It's not the optimal move. Um, I think it's the case that um, black has a number of winning variations to choose from. So like where I would play is I would play that mark point like this. Oh, sorry. I made a mistake there. Black will play like this. And uh, the value of this move is that it takes away white's eye space. Mm -hmm. Um, in the game, White had some ice space there in the center. Mm -hmm, so this mm -hmm. would be forcing White to play uh, a move like this on the side to make a life. So this would be Sente for Black. Um, but Black, uh, even playing in the game, although it um, gives White some potential to make an eye and it lost a tempo in the end, uh, the fact that Black is winning anyway means it's, it's probably okay for AlphaCall. Wow. So white plays like this. You can see white's starting to make an eye. It's not completely an eye yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so uh, white's doing some fancy stuff here. I've been wondering about that. Yeah, it's, it's just not. It's not going to work. Um, and and finally, when white cuts here. Oh, I say. I now see. white's established a potential eye at the mark point. So if black kills white on the right side, white's going to make an eye at the mark point by adding stone. So uh, part of what white was trying to do is to get this cut in because that um, that makes a difference to have that eye in the center. And then black squeezes. So when black squeezes like this, white doesn't have any potential to live on the side. So the side group is dead, but white gets to push through here. Um, and th another nasty move that white found, because if black is careless, then the corner is going to come to life. Like if white, if black plays something like that, white can play an Atari here and black doesn't know what to do. Because like if black plays this way, white's gonna live in the corner. But if black sneaky, doesn't do that, sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. If black plays this way, white's gonna break descend. Right. That's that's right. a disaster. That's it's gonna be a disaster. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
So this is dangerous for black. Black has to be very careful. Um, in the game, black connects her. Now that's so black is actually um, being forced to back down a little bit. Um, white has pushed black around a little bit and reduced the lower right corner territory by a uh, couple of points, maybe. Mm -hmm. With that in value, the white made that that eye in the center, the potential eye there, which means that white's alive on the side now. Mm -hmm. So white gets Sente to return to the center here, which is a really important point. If black had pushed through there, it would have been very difficult for white to save those two stones. So black plays the final big point. Um, and so you, you can see that white is very cleverly dealing with all mm -hmm. these weaknesses that white has, but it's just not good enough. Like black is more yes. than 10 points ahead yeah. on the board. And yeah, this is a big move. Um, it changes how the right side situation will um, play out. So it's a big move that way. Um, but of course, this is a big move too. So these two points are interchangeable. They're Mi. And white has to play here. Black plays away. This is again the final big side move. Um, so it's a it's a beautiful end game. That black's playing very solidly and not making any mistakes, obviously. And I, again, um, this center position. If we just ignore what's happening immediately, playing here is a pretty big move for black because mm -hmm. that will establish a fairly big territory. So that sort of explains what this move is. Um, it looks sort of weird to be playing what looks almost like a fighting move and in the final stages of the game. But actually what white is doing is white is reducing that potential black territory. And at the same time is trying to put a little pressure on black in the center. So uh, black um, continues in the center here. And yeah, so this is uh, finally, this is the final big side move it stops White's endgame sequence starting from the mark point. So this is establishing that side territory. And the game is getting gradually simpler. Um, just a few more points that I want to get into. It gets exciting in the end, because uh, White does some weird stuff. Um, this is where White starts to throw away points. Like At this point, um, Black's already um, more than 10 points ahead on the board before Comey, that is. Mm -hmm. So um, Black's going to win easily, and it's not going to be one of those half-point games. Wow. So White starts to do some crazy stuff. White's trying to put some put Black and Damizumari there, uh, but this is going to be a call that White can't win in the corner. And what's more, um, the right side group is getting into trouble now. We're going to see that happen. So White, um, now Black plays here. Now we can see White's um, with that throw in on the first line, White has put himself into Dummies Murray. And if White connects now, White's not going to have eye shape. Yeah. So White gets really fancy now <laughs> and found a way to live. So this is actually, it's a um, beautiful sequence that White has locally. Oh, that is very this. clever. Very clever. If Black covers here, White's going to be able to play on Atari to make a, uh -huh. an eye one. Uh -huh. Then White can just connect. Um, and I left it here, but actually if black, um, black can't connect on the side, so it's, it's not going to work. Mm. If black connects, white can actually, um, of course white can um, play Atari to capture the two stones. But it's actually better for white to fill a liberty here, threatening to live in the corner. Ah. Uh. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, we have a dog here. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Uh, my dog was teasing me, trying to get up, and then changing his mind. So he's coming. Yeah, finally, in. I got. Yeah, he's coming in for the. Uh, the yeah, the dog, the dog to Suji. Right. Yeah, uh, it's an exciting point in the game. Also, just, because it's, it's, it's Black a tries to kill this back, right? right? It's a double snapback. Exactly. It's a oh double snapback. Oh my snap God! Back. Sorry, uh, that was a quick miss. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there it is. There it is. Yeah. So um, this would be a complete disaster for Black, obviously. Yeah, um, but very Black, so cool. It's cool, yeah. So Black would be wouldn't be going this far, obviously, um, <laughs> but it just shows how this move is working really, really well. So Black just takes the one stone, um, and then and so White's okay. Um, I'll show in a variation how that's working. 
Yeah. Um, back goes back to the end game moves. And takes the call. Uh, this is where white resigns, actually. But it's not as if this white group is turned into a call, because let's just add a, a different move to make a variation. And when black takes the call, white can just connect. Hmm. And black can play here, white can uh, play here to cross the black stones. And I actually made an end game sequence to follow that. Black plays this. Um, and that's why I'm saying the upper right is a call, because uh, white can come from behind, and black has, uh, let's see, one, two, three places at least that black has to connect. So mm. it's going to be a call there. Mm -hmm. But white doesn't have, looking at the whole board position, white just doesn't have any call there. Like white has two call there's in the lower right corner, um, but no other call there's to speak of. Mm. Black has a lot of call there's. So black's just going to continue the end game. And I for, forget how many points it was. This is uh, significantly more than 10 points before Comey. Um, mm -hmm. Black has gained several points. And Black's never going to have to back down. Black's going to fill those codes in the upper right uh, during the end game. I mean, during the Dame points. Black can wait to the final, after playing the final one point move before protecting the upper right corner. Black has so mm -hmm. many codes. Black, like Black has something like three, three codes in the lower right, lower left, sorry, lower left corner only. And then black has all these co threats in the center where white has those bamboo joints. So there's co threats like this and like this that black can use in the center too. So there's going to be a lot of black co threats. You're saying um, that black, black, black was comfortably ahead basically since the, um, the middle, late middle game. And, you know, so it really was not a. I think your comment has been playing like Master when Master had a lead. Yes, just because in the AlphaGo AlphaGo series, usually the games are so much closer. Sure. Uh, the players don't really have so many opportunities to control the game and take a small loss to take it into the end game easily. Like that's a strategy that um, that's a technique that uh, top human players use, and AlphaGo was using in the Master series to take some small local losses while controlling the game and just forcing a sequence into the end game, after which um, I'm pretty sure that an AI would have the winning percentage move up after the game was simplified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but in the AlphaGo, AlphaGo series, it's very rare to see that happen because usually the games are much closer and difficult to win. Right. And so there's a lot more seesawing back and forth. Um, but yes. this is an unusual game in which Black actually had the opportunity to do that. And right. Even though White was AlphaGo too, it didn't. It couldn't um, get a reversal. It couldn't turn it around. It, it created some really interesting opportunities for itself, though, so, and and gave Black. You know, I mean, Black has to really watch its P's and Q's. I mean, there's, there's right. Yeah, there was there were some dangerous positions there. Yes. So very very cool. All right, so uh, another great analysis. Thank you. Uh, before we sign off, our next game is game 10. Um, and we should just say just a little bit about it because it's kind of a, you, you, it's a, you've been working on, on game 10 for a while. And can you talk about why? Yeah, game 10 is an outstanding game, even in this um, series of games, in this series of AlphaGo self-played games. Um, for one thing, it's um, it's a very complicated game, and it was very challenging for me to try to understand. I, I finally decided that I have come to a point where I think I understand most of what's happening, but like it was keeping me up at night. It's, it's a very <laughs> if you're a serious Go player, this game is going to have an impact. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's dangerous, maybe. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a very exciting game. Um, and one thing that's really outstanding about it is it, it's like it's, um, you go through the whole sequence, like there's all these uh, fascinating fights that it goes through and everything um, finishes. And I, I, I'm sort of breathing this big sigh of relief and it's turning into an end game and then everything falls apart. And it's sort of like someone came, off, came, came along with an ax <laughs> and chopped up the go board because it gets really um, everything falls apart. Like all of those finished shapes that you thought were territories turn into um, life and death uh, positions. Like there's 
um, in the very, if you count all the variations I was making, there's something like eight groups that are living or dying, depending on how the players play it out. Oh my god. Yeah, I can and see why this keeping you up at night. night. Those were groups that were supposed to be territories, just like um, just two or three moves before it all started happening. Wow. Wow. And okay, so well, so really, yeah. something for folks to look forward to. Also, we should mention um, that after we do game 10, uh, we're going to take a look back um, at uh, some of your comments. We've been getting lots of comments uh, and uh, and try and answer some of those uh, some comments as well. Um, yes. So keep those comments coming. We appreciate them. We do read them. Uh, we don't always have time to, uh, in fact, we don't have time to respond to them in uh, online, but uh, we will try and pick out some of the really interesting ones uh, or the amusing ones or whatever Michael chooses <laughs> uh, sure. and take, take a look at those. So, uh, all right. Thank you very much, Michael. Wonderful Thank as you. always. Thank you all for watching and we will see you next time.